If you've been trying to decide between Final Cut Pro and iMovie today, I am here to help you with a comparison video, breaking it down as simply and quickly as possible. So if you're ready for that, let's go. Hey everyone, welcome to Shelly Saves the Day. On this channel, we talk video editing and YouTube. So if that sounds good to you, make sure you hit that like, subscribe, become part of the fam. I would love to have you be here with us on that journey. And I would also like to say, if you're at all interested in becoming a channel member and getting more out of this channel, you're more than welcome to join the membership. You will get access to, well, just go check the link down below. There's a little join button. It will bring up a video that shows you all about it. Of course, on-screen mention always goes to my platinum level channel member. So thank you so much to TubeBuddy for being with me. I appreciate you so, so much. All right. Today, Final Cut Pro, iMovie, which one do you do, invest in, edit in, all that, all those questions. We're going to answer that right now. So if you are someone who is newer to YouTube, you may be thinking, hey, I need to go out and buy Final Cut Pro right away. Wrong. I just want to say that sometimes you should just start out with what you have. So if you have an Apple computer, if you have an iPad, if you have an iPhone, an iPod, you get it. If you're in the i family, you're going to have access to iMovie for free. So right off the bat, free 99 is a great price. Okay. So that is a huge bonus for iMovie right there. Now, one thing to also keep in mind, Final Cut Pro does not offer an app on any of those devices. It only offers the software version on your computer, whether that's laptop, desktop, whatever, it is only available on that. So keep that in mind, first of all, that you're only ever going to be able to use Final Cut Pro on a real computer. Okay. So if you're someone who doesn't have a real computer, or if you're someone who is always going to be traveling, wanting to do editing at all on the fly with your iPhone or with your iPad, anything like that, Final Cut Pro is not going to work for you. Now that we've talked free 99, we got to talk about the other elephant in the room right here. Final Cut Pro is not cheap. Okay. This is a professional editor, which it is a one-time cost, which Okay, it is February 2021. As far as I know, it is a one time cost. So if you're watching this in the future, and you're like, hey, Shelly, Apple has switched to a subscription model. Okay, at the time, it was not so I have heard rumors that they're applying for a trademark change to have service, ooh, possibly as a subscription, but I can neither confirm nor deny, okay, that that's happening. I'm just saying as of right now, Final Cut Pro costs $299. Ugh, I know it hurts, but also wait till the end and I'm gonna show you two different ways that you might be able to get that down cheaper, okay? Because I will always try and help you save money, okay? Now, $299, what does that buy you, all right? First of all, some of the things that you are going to get as the difference between Final Cut Pro and iMovie is going to be the number of overlays or things that you can have on your video timeline. Okay, so if you are in iMovie, you get limited to two. So that means one as a with a photo overlay or a video cutaway or, you know, that plus a title plus some audio. Audio has as many layers as you want. You can add one title at a time. But when it comes to actual video overlays or something like that, that you're going to add, you get one additional on top of your main timeline. That is probably one of the biggest differentiating factors right there is if you are someone who knows that you're always going to try and put multiple overlays on a video, then that would be a reason to get out of iMovie and get into Final Cut Pro. Okay. That is definitely a reason right there because the frustration of having to render a clip, bring it back in and then add another overlay one at a time or trying to figure out ways around it can be frustrating, but you won't know that until you're already in there and trying to do it. So again, try it first. Now, another thing that you're going to get when it comes to Final Cut Pro, you are going to get way more options when it comes to color grading instead of just can I increase saturation or brightness or very basic things, you're going to get more of the full color scopes. You're going to get those RGB graphs so that you can try and manipulate your colors. If you don't want to, if you don't know what I'm talking about, then maybe you're not ready also and you don't need those things and the iMovie version of the way that they color grade is fine for you. By the way, if you are absolutely confused and you don't know what I'm talking about with any of this stuff, I have an iMovie course that is going to show you all the ins and outs of editing inside of iMovie so that you can end up using it like a pro and then for yourself, you can decide if you need to make the switch to Final Cut 
Pro. So you can always go to iMovie Made Easy and check that out, just putting that, that out there. Now with audio options as well, you are gonna be a little bit more limited. There's a little bit of options inside of iMovie, take out some of the hum or the frequency kind of like weirdness, try an audio duck and keep it all the same level. But once you get into Final Cut Pro, there's going to be a lot more options. Again, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you may be fine to be an iMovie and just stay with the more basic and limited options because sometimes when you have too many options, things tend to go a little bit crazy, <laughs> okay? Now, another thing that you're gonna have is you are gonna have more options for things called plugins. Plugins are basically motion template or special effects that you can do, whether that's, you know, cool lights and effects or like on-screen animated, you know, things with callouts or any kind of stuff like that that you see in a lot of people's videos are achieved with plugins. Now, one thing, plugins for the most part, you end up purchasing them from additional websites. There's a couple that are free. I'm not saying they're great, but most of the plugins that you want, you're gonna end up also paying additional money for. Now, iMovie does not support plugins at all, but that means that it's also, it's free but it's a closed environment, so you're not gonna be able to add any of that stuff in. So any kind of special effects, you're going to have to make them from scratch, you're gonna to have to deal with whatever is in iMovie, or you're gonna to have to bring it in from an outside place already created. Now, whether that's you know Keynote or something else, you are going to have to bring that in separately. So it's not ever going to be included inside of iMovie. So plugins is a huge thing. So it could be everything from the karaoke bubbles to all of those call outs, like I said. So if you're someone who thinks that you're gonna to wanna to do that kind of stuff, eventually to add more pizzazz to your videos, then you're gonna to wanna to do plugins and you're gonna to want to use Final Cut Pro. Another thing that is also going to be different between the two is in Final Cut Pro, you're going to be able to do a lot of keyboard customizations and shortcuts. Now, while there are keyboard shortcuts and there's actually a list, I will link it up here in the cards. Um, if you want, you can go download a list of hotkey commands for iMovie and those are just kind of like helpful to have. So playback, cutting, pasting, adding attributes, all of that stuff, um, those can be done with keyboard shortcuts. Now in Final Cut Pro, you can customize what those things actually do and make it so much faster. In fact, there's also a great video that Cody Warner had done on Final Cut Pro keyboard shortcuts, and I will link that one here in the cards as well. Cody did a great job with that, way better than probably I can explain it. I have also done some of them from his video. So I will link that and you guys can watch it if you're using Final Cut Pro. That might be helpful for you. Now, similar to the plugins and actually getting stuff to be called out on screen or kind of like be special effecty, iMovie doesn't really have the ability to do much with their titles. Their titles are very limited inside of iMovie. You have a few options to choose from, but the only thing you can sometimes kind of customize is the color or you know, uh, maybe the font or maybe the font size. So usually the placement, you can't move it around the screen very much, whereas in Final Cut Pro, you really have the ability to change those titles, move them all over the screen and do whatever you want with them. Now, if you are on an iOS version on an iPad or just not a computer, I saw, and I made a video on this, Movable Titles has already started to make its way into that as the application. So one would assume, assuming here, air quote bunny, assuming, one would assume that if it is on the apps, it is also soon going to be available, hopefully in some sort of update on the computer version. Don't quote me on that, but I think it's coming. And that would be really, really, really cool because that is also one of the things that holds a lot of people back in iMovie. It's like, oh, I want this title, but I just want it to be up here in the corner. or I want it to move around. And so you used to have to do something separately, like doing an animated graphic inside of Keynote, exporting with some sort of transparent background and then bringing into iMovie. So it's just more steps, you can do it, it's just more effort and that effort takes time and so maybe that benefit and cost is better spent on upgrading to Final Cut Pro. Y you with me so far? All right. If you're still with me, make sure you give this video a thumbs up, okay? Now, another thing that Final Cut Pro definitely has over iMovie is the ability to do multicam clips. In fact, it can do like up to 16 multicam clips inside of one type of thing. Now, that's not something that a lot of people are ever, ever going to be doing, but iMovie can't do it at all. So because you only have the two tracks 
and it's not really a multi-cam clip it's just then a cutaway between one and the other which is great if you want to do some sort of b-roll shot but it's not the same as truly doing a multi-cam clip so if you're someone who has multiple cameras and you're doing something like an unboxing video and you don't want to have to fight with iMovie around that and the cutaways and which one is going to do which then um, iMovie may not cut it for you. But again, you're not gonna know this until you're in there and trying it out and finding the limitations, what you're actually headbutting up against. The next thing I wanna say is the learning curve when it comes to learning the software itself. iMovie, while it may be like headbutting for some people to be like, oh, it's so frustrating, it is still far more intuitive and easier to navigate than I would say that Final Cut Pro is sometimes having to understand libraries and events and projects and um, like generated files and proxies. That is a lot to understand if you're not if you're not totally invested in this world. And if you're new to it, then iMovie makes it so simple to get started. It makes it simple to understand and it makes it simple to keep going. So if you're someone who is not very familiar with creating and working with video clips, then iMovie is probably going to be a much easier and less steep of a learning curve for you. Okay, now I talked about price at the beginning. I'm gonna give you some ways to save money. First up, if you are a student, okay, listen up here, little students, put your thinking, listening ears on, okay? You guys have the opportunity, guys and gals, to also go out there and get the student bundle for education on these apps. So instead of Final Cut Pro being $299, which is a pretty huge amount of investment and pennies all scraped together, you guys have the option of actually getting four or five programs into one education bundle for $199. It's nuts, okay? So if you can get that, you should definitely do that. That's less than it costs for the program itself. Okay, now for everyone else who is not a student or teacher, I believe teachers also get that same discount, you have the option to purchase iTunes gift cards, usually at a discount, sometimes from websites, sometimes from retailers where they have, you know, like buy it for 15% off or 10% off and iTunes gift cards do go on sale, but Final Cut Pro never does. But if you buy those gift cards on sale, then it's like buying Final Cut Pro on sale because you can use those gift cards to pay for your software purchase, okay? Now, one other thing is if you didn't know, Final Cut Pro usually has the ability to have a 30-day free trial where you can download it as well. So you could download it, maybe do a project or two, get a feel for it, see if you like it, see if it's even something that you actually feel that you need, and then you can decide to purchase after that. Now, a few things that I really, really want Final Cut Pro to do, and it would make the decision easier as well in the future for me. One, I want them to have a true app for iPad Pro, okay? I get it, maybe the phones are not powerful enough, but I, I, I strongly believe that Final Cut Pro should be on a iPad Pro, an iPad Pro, because if you think about this, you can run Sidecar and do most of the applications, um, full integrations and, and things when you have it connected to your computer and you're using basically your iPad as a second screen and you can do so much of it. I know that they have the ability to make an iPad version of Final Cut Pro. So one, absolutely. I want that so much because I want to be able to start kind of like Adobe Rush, um, you know, and Premiere does it where you can start a project on one and then, you know, keep going and travel on the road and keep going with it, I would love to see that kind of option be created. So start it, you know, whether it's on my computer and then go to my iPad or back and forth, that kind of like cloud sharing or multi-people editing type of thing, I would love to see that. Even if it doesn't come to a phone, I would love to see it on the iPad Pro. Yes, absolutely. One thing that I wanna see come to the iMovie version, I wanna see movable titles. I don't think that's asking too much and I just feel they could be a little bit more generous with us. They could give us one more video overlay or just overlay in general. I feel like one more would be just a little bit better, just a little bit movable titles and one more thing on the magnetic timeline. Could you just help us out here just a little bit, okay? Also, 
One thing that we did not mention is going to be that Final Cut Pro is going to also support multiple sizes. And that is going to be, you know, square or the 1080 by 1350, which is the four by five or the true vertical of the, you know, 1080 by 1920. It handles those with ease and you can set up an entire project that way. iMovie, you can only do in roundabout ways with limited help and support and without all of the features and integrations if you kind of do some hacks. So I really feel like iMovie should also have variable sizes for outputs for projects. It would be great to see, but I understand those are more features in a higher level or a professional level video editor. Can you just get by with iMovie? Maybe, the question is, okay? So if you're just starting out, especially if you're doing this for video editing for YouTube videos, I would highly encourage anyone to start with iMovie. One, because it's free. Two, because you're gonna learn the interface and you're gonna see, maybe you don't need to buy Final Cut because you're not maxing out the options inside of iMovie and you're fine to just keep using it, but you don't know that until you try it. You really have to feel like you're outgrowing Final, uh, outgrowing iMovie sometimes to feel like you really need to graduate into Final Cut Pro. Now, that's not what some people do. Some people just go straight and drink from the fire hose and that is a valid option too. You can totally do that. I'm saying personally for me, if I were just starting out because other things can already cost money, you know, I would just start out with iMovie for free. Okay, that's just my two cents on that. Now, I feel like I've rambled on about, you know, these two programs for a really, really long time. So I'm sorry, slash, I hope it was helpful, but I feel like it's something that you really also have to go in and try it out. Because as much as anyone wants to complain about iMovie, um, you know, being free or Final Cut Pro being way too expensive, you may find that you're absolutely fine with doing everything that you need to do inside of iMovie. I know channels that have gone to a million or two million subscribers using iMovie. It's totally capable of doing everything you need. And when you pair it with something like Keynote and animations, you can do a lot of things. It can look very good, very impressive. And it's not always about having the most expensive tools because you could have all of these software program and not know how to use them. And you could have a professional on iMovie, you could have a beginner on Final Cut Pro, and the iMovie one is still gonna look way better. So don't let that tool of choice be the deciding factor whether or not you're making videos. And in fact, personal story, when I first got Final Cut Pro, I was so intimidated by it. I was going back to iMovie most of the time just so I could finish a video on time and get it published to YouTube. And I was like, I will learn a skill at a time so I can build my videos inside of Final Cut Pro. So I started with, how can I do green screen? Because I was doing green screen for my intros. And then it was, how can I do this cutaway? Or how can I do multiple titles? And so I started building in how to do basically my videos like I do in iMovie inside of Final Cut Pro until I felt comfortable enough to make the switch. So it's not just sunshine and rainbows when you're trying to switch or decide which one. So there's definitely a learning curve with both, no matter which one you pick. And I, I know that you'll be able to find the right decision, but I hope that this video was helpful for you. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a like and subscribe, would love to be part of your weekly thing. So yeah, come back and see me. And I'm here every Sunday. I'm live every Tuesday and Thursday. So come see me for those and I'll see you in a video very soon. Bye everyone.